Hi everybody, it's Paculus here, and last week we were talking about how you soak a horse's foot, and Catherine asked us, thank you Catherine for the note, um, what to t maybe talk a little bit about abscesses. So, but before we even talk about that, it's probably a good idea to have a little bit of a reminder about what's going on inside the horse's foot. So this foot's from a foal I've probably had, I've probably had it here for about 40 years, and the person who gave it to me had it quite a while too, so I guess this poor little fellow is long gone. But what's left behind in here is what we call the insensitive lamini. You see that? It almost looks like the underside of a mushroom. In the living horse, interlocking with that, those little tiny leaves that you can see is the sensitive lamini. And when those two parts connect, or interlock, so to speak, they form an incredibly strong bond. Essentially, the weight of the entire horse is suspended inside the hoof capsule by this powerful interlocking structure. It's really quite amazing. So as you can see, like that horse's foot, it's pretty strong on the outside, and all of the insides are pretty well protected. If you look at a horse at the bottom of a horse's foot, you'll see that there's what we call the white line. There's, this is where the lamini, the sensitive lamini, and the insensitive lamini join. And that's kind of like a cheesy sort of material here. And little bits of stone and sharp particles of sand can get up into there. There's like a little crack here. Anything like that is sort of compromising that great sort of protective tissue that the horse has all the way around his foot. And it's especially bad if you get a horse out in the soft, uh, muddy weather. This, this foot will get a little bit softer and all of these structures get a little bit weaker. All these little imperceptible little cracks that you can barely see with your eye. It's enough for a little tiny piece of sand or something to get up in there. Have you ever had like a, a splinter or something, you know, and you, you might, it might hurt a little bit when you get it, but you can pretty much forget about it as the day goes on and perhaps you'll even go to sleep that night, not even think about it, but the next morning when you wake up, you'll notice that it's a little bit swollen and you can see the splinter, but it's kind of encapsulated in a little bit of pus. Sort of yucky thing. So if you lance that a little bit and just give it a squeeze, it really hurts like the devil at that point. But once you squeeze it and that pus comes out, usually the little piece of splinter comes out, it's all good and, and the pain goes away. It's the same thing with the horse. When that little piece of um, particular matter that we're talking about, like a little piece of stone or a little piece of gravel or just a tiny little thing gets up into the horse's foot, exactly the same thing happens. The horse's body sends pus as a way to fight the infection, to, to realize that there's something foreign in there, doesn't belong, so they start to create this pus. But unfortunately, as it starts to swell, there's nowhere for that swelling to go inside that hard hoof capsule. Sort of like, if, imagine if you've got a splinter that starts festering underneath your fingernail and then you have to walk on it. I mean, it really, really hurts. In fact, they'll, they'll often say that the horse is so lame, it's almost like it's like broken leg lame. Like the horse really almost acts as though he's broken something. <laughs> so sort of a, a weird little rule of thumb I have about that kind of thing is if you ever watch a horse with an abscess, so I'm going to do my horse impersonation now, okay? So if you have... You have a horse with an abscess, and let's say it's this leg that's sore. So the horse might be like totally, I don't want to put this foot down, oh my gosh, it's horrible. And so you ask the horse to take a couple steps forward, and it'll kind of do this, kind of do this, and then it starts to go, oh yeah, you know, it really still hurts, but I think, okay, I'm so, I can sort of manage this. If the horse has broken something, those footsteps never get better, okay? Like, so that's kind of a weird little test that you can do. If the horse kind of walks out of it a little bit, never sound, just gets a little bit less, ouch, 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 ouch. It's probably an abscess. <laughs> okay. The other thing you're going to find when the horse has an abscess is that he's going to have what we call a bounding digital pulse. So we've talked about this before. This digital pulse is really important to try to learn to find on your horse. It's going to be in this area here, and you can put your fingers on it, and you're going to feel it. It's about the size of a piece of baling twine. <laughs> you know, if you slide your fingers back and forth, you're going to feel it. Okay, so you're going to notice that the horse has, it's not a faster pulse, it's a bigger pulse. It feels like almost like a headache in the horse's foot. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of swelling in this area here, and even at the back of the pastern. Like if you run your fingers up and down there, you'll feel little bits of ridges. I mean, there's not much to swell in that area, right? But you can feel these little ridges that there's a bit of swelling in the pastern area. You'll also find that there's quite a bit of heat in the horse's foot. Now your veterinarian or your farrier, he's going to have what we call hoof testers, and they're sort of these big pincer things um, that they can kind of squeeze on the horse's foot. Um, 
they'll kind of go around the sole of the foot, kind of using these pincers to see how the horse reacts. And trust me, when you hit the place where the abscess is, the horse will tell you straight away. Then what they'll do is they'll take a knife and they'll conservatively try to cut a little bit, pare away a little bit of the sole to see if they can get the abscess to drain out. What will happen, depending on how much pressure there was and how much that pus wants to come out, it can really spray across the wall sometimes when the, when the vet finally nicks it. It'll just, like a black, it's black pus that just comes streaming out. As long as it's not that dramatic, it'll just dribble down the horse's foot, but it's kind of always exciting when it goes across the room. So if you by chance miss the, um, let's say the farrier or the blacksmith aren't available or they aren't able to find it that way, generally speaking, our experience has been anyway, that it usually will resolve by coming out through the back of the horse's heel, right in here somewhere. It's sort of the softest area. This is really hard, right? But over here it gets a little softer. So sometimes the abscess of the pus will migrate to here and they'll break through. That's why when we um, soak a horse's foot, we always make sure that we have it, the water going up over the coronet band, you know, so that we get all of that nice and soft. The one place that I, I don't like when it resolves this way, and we've only had a few of these over the years, is when the, the abscess kind of comes up through here. And it ends up sort of, instead of going down and out through the bottom of the foot or out through the back of the heel, it migrates all the way up here and comes up through the coronet band. That's kind of nasty because now there's sort of like a channel that that has built inside the foot. And again, now you're working with, gravity is working against you now, right? Because there's a hole there and you want to clean it out, but nothing drains upwards, right? You've got to sort of draw that kind of stuff out. And the same, you know, you want to make sure, talk to your vet and say, how do I keep that opening open until the big hole underneath it sort of heals up? So it's a little bit of a longer process when, a, when an abscess resolves that way. One of the things you always want to remember about an abscess is that no matter where it comes out, your horse should be up to date. Well, he always should be anyway, but he should be up to date on his tetanus shots because you've got an open wound, so to speak, that's in dirt, right? So it's just a always a safety precaution. Okay, so we decided it's getting a little too long-winded tonight, so I'm going to stop there and we'll show you next week how you pulled us a foot. So in the meantime, if you've got any other questions about abscesses or things like that, give us a shout in our blog. Go over there. It's called ismyhorsehappy.com. You can scroll down and leave us a message. We'd appreciate it. Thanks again, Catherine, for the question this week, and we'll talk to you next week. Remember to thank your horse. We'll talk to you soon.